Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. My name is Neil with bikepacking.com. I'm again in my basement here bringing you a new video and today is exciting not only because I'm probably gonna have pizza later, but because we are going to talk about a topic that is overlooked all the time. And that is how to protect your bike from bags, bikepacking bags, uh, bike packing in general, regular wear and tear. So in this video, I'm gonna go over some high wear areas or areas that are susceptible to more wear than other areas on the bike. We're gonna talk about how to protect your bike and your frame from those areas. And uh, just gonna share some tips and tricks to kind of get you through the, the whole process of installing bags and, um, and just avoiding the worst. A bike like this, retired, sad, because I neglected it. Hmm. Actually, this frame isn't that retired. It's just old and geometry's changed quite a bit. So it's retired-ish. Every bike is different. You've got full suspension bikes, gravel bikes, dropper mountain bikes like this bike. Um, I think it's important to know the terrain you're riding on before uh, you actually take care of or protect your frame. Uh, that's not to say that riding on a smooth road for your entire tour, or just in general, is, uh, isn't is going to uh, damage your frame if you don't take care of it. It definitely will. I do think, though, that the more grime and grit and off-road travel that you go through will definitely lead to more wear uh, a little bit quicker. All right, so let's get started with areas of the frame that are more susceptible to damage. Starting with the chain stay. Obviously, you've got the chain that kind of splits the, the stay here. So essentially, you've got a chain that can hit the top of the stay and the bottom of the stay. So that area is super important. And I know a lot of bike manufacturers do have a protective piece that comes with the bike. That being said, sometimes they fall off. Um, so being cognizant of this area is super important. Not only that, but the side of the chainstay, your shoe or the, your heel can sometimes hit that, especially on a mountain bike. Um, so making sure that this is covered is important. The other thing that is important is the inner side of the chainstay, uh, especially if you're riding through a bunch of grit and grime. Uh, that area can be really susceptible to um, basically just wearing down on your frame, especially if your tire is tucked all the way in. Um, especially if you have uh, adjustable dropouts and whatnot. So that's a really important area. Another spot is the main triangle. A lot of frame bags come with straps, Velcro straps, one wrap straps. A lot of frame bags are also direct mount or a little bit of both. So knowing where all of those areas are and knowing where they are, wear more is super important to understand. See, I took the frame bag off this cutthroat and you can see a bunch of areas where I just was neglecting the frame because I didn't think that a direct mount frame bag would be as damaging uh, as a Velcro frame bag. I was wrong. Anywhere on the seat tube, down tube, top tube, wherever a frame strap will go or anywhere on or in the frame where a direct mount bolt will go or where, wherever you end up pushing stuff in a frame bag, wherever that frame bag touches the inside of the frame is where you'll see more of that wear and you can definitely see that on my cutthroat frame here. The most susceptible high wear area up front is the head tube. Handlebar bags typically like to hug up against head tubes that kind of creates a really stable fit but it does in turn rub up against your head tube. So that's why I really like head badges because it kind of gives you a little bit of uh, protection already without having to do anything. Um, and then another high wear area is obviously brake lines and cable housing. Uh, so making sure to either trim them down properly or protect them like I did here is important. I ended up actually wanting to keep this brake line long just because I wanted to uh, use a suspension fork down the road so I didn't wanna have to add another brake line. And then obviously just kind of similar to the chainstay conversation in back, uh, you know, going through mud and stuff like that, this bike has a lot of clearance, but if your bike doesn't have a ton of clearance it, and you go through mud and cake on mud against your tire, uh, it will end up rubbing up against the fork blade there. And you can see this specific bike has um, that protection built into it, which is kind of nice. So uh, when you're shopping for a specific bike packing bike, 
that is something that you can kind of look into. All right, and just a few more spots, obviously, you know, you have, if you're using a rack system, installing the racks properly, making sure that you're not cross-threading any of the screw threads, um, and making sure that the rack itself isn't uh, rubbing up against the, the frame, uh, the steel or the carbon or the aluminum is super important. So sometimes you might have to put like a rubber shim in there or something like that. So you can avoid that or you might have to end up bending um, like a rack or fender stay uh, just to avoid any rubbage. Um, and your local bike shop can definitely help you with that. Um, but that's just something to kind of think about. So I think it's a good time to just chat about just some older frames that I've had and that the team at bikepacking.com has had, even Forks, just taking a look at some of the damage and kind of seeing what can actually be done uh, to bike frames when you just kind of neglect them and don't necessarily protect them from uh, bikepacking bags, but just uh, general wear. So this salsa spearfish has seen a lot of bike packing, a lot of uh, Colorado Trail, Arizona Trail, um, just off-road riding, uh, single track riding. And basically when you're jumping around and you're going through a bunch of single track, rocky single track and climbing and descending, the contents inside your bag kind of move around. So that's why I really like bags that come with uh, protective padding, so just like a foam padding uh, along the inside of the frame triangle, um, just because it actually works protecting the things from inside the bag to the frame. So that's something that you should probably think about when purchasing a custom frame bag or any frame bag for that matter. One thing that's kind of changed over the past few years is internally routed cables and housing and brake lines. A lot of the neglect that I have on this bike was due to just cable and housing rubbing up against this uh, inner part of my down tube. You, most bikes can, you can avoid that now with uh, internally routing. Most manufacturers are adding that, which is super awesome. Just kind of keeps everything neat and tucked inside the frame um, and less frame wear from, uh, from those cables and housing rubbing up against the frame bag as you see on this bike. And then the other thing, I mean, I've had a bunch of cable and housing rub even like above my uh, bottom bracket here that's actually dug in like maybe two or three millimeters deep and this is a really overbuilt area on your bike anyways but still it's a little scary so um, just knowing that uh, knowing your bike and, and knowing the options out there is super important um, and something I really like to to use when I'm searching for um, ways to install frame bags and searching for new bikes and whatnot. Another nice addition that many manufacturers are providing on their bikes are not only your chain stay uh, protection, but down tube protection. So rock strikes, uh, rocks that pop up uh, after running over them with your front tire. Um, making sure that this area is protected is super important because you can get hauling and, and a rock could come up and hit the frame and, and crack it or dent it or something like that and you don't want that. Um, I think a lot of manufacturers also understand that these bikes are um, going to be used and abused. Um, so they don't want you to necessarily wrap your whole frame in protective coating and tape and all that. Um, they want you to see the frame color. I mean, there's people that are specifically hired to make these uh, designs of the frame and the colorway. So I think it's a, a slight to them when you basically buy a frame new and you just cover it. I think you need to cover it just in certain spots. So let's get into where you should cover it and what you should use. All right, so how do you actually end up protecting your frame from say a frame bag? What I'm gonna do is basically talk about a few options and then actually install them on the inside of my frame, test it out for a few months, and then come back to you with a definitive answer on what protective tapes work and what don't work. All right, so just starting with RideWrap. RideWrap is a company that specializes in uh, tape to protect your frame. Uh, this is the essential protection kit, basically, uh, it will work really well for uh, being able to place on my frame or the inside of my frame to protect from the frame bag. And just taking a look at the contents inside 
the box. It comes with the tape itself, which is already pre-cut for some areas of the frame, which is pretty nice. And then it comes with a bunch of tools that will help install the tape, some pre-install cleaning wipe, and a bunch of stickers. And then it also comes with a chamois, and then instructions. All right, next, this is just some lizard skin uh, adhesive bike protection. Lizard skin was actually the first bike protection that I ended up using basically in a really small form like this, just to protect myself, my bike from cables and housing. This is just the frame kit, so this is gonna work really well on the inside of the frame to protect my frame bag. All right, next up is shelter tape. This is a product that's actually made in Italy. Uh, it comes with a bunch of these really long, thick taped strips that we'll be able to cut to length. Next up is the surface guard tape, which is also known as helicopter tape. Uh, this is just in a roll, um, relatively thin tape uh, in comparison to say the shelter tape. I've got a lot of it here and I'll be able to just kind of uh, cut what I need and install it on the frame. All right, so next up is the Gorilla tape and this is uh, just a clear uh, tape from Gorilla that um, kind of scares me a little bit, mainly because the brand Gorilla is, uh, has that reputation of being really strong. Uh, Gorilla glue, Gorilla duct tape is really, really super strong. It has a nice, strong adhesive to it. So this will be interesting uh, to install on the bike. Then we have a silicone tape, which um, isn't necessarily an ad adhesive, but it sticks to itself, which is nice. This is probably the tape that I've used the most and I have the most experience with. I know how this is going to act, but uh, it'll be nice to kind of see how it holds up among the other tapes. All right, and another tape here is just a regular old packing tape. I know this is probably what most people have at home. Um, so why not give it a whirl? And last but not least, we've just got some regular old electrical tape here. And um, I also know how this stuff works. I don't like it, but we're gonna give it a test. All right, so we have a ton of tape here to test. What I'm going to do now is cut and trim the tape, install it on the interior part of the frame, and then we'll kind of give it a test. We'll be riding with it for a few months and see how it works out. All right, so real quick, I'm just actually going to get a clean rag, spray a bunch of rubbing alcohol on it, and just kind of rub down the interior part of the frame. plus days of use, roughly 1,000 miles and countless slices of pizza. We are going to take the frame bag off and see how all of the tape held up. All right, so I just took off the frame bag and uh, for the most part, most of this grit and grime is from a route that I did in the upper peninsula of Michigan. Uh, called the Moore Root, cr created by Matt Acker. The route was great. It had a bunch of mixed gravel, a little bit of pavement, single track, uh, but it also had just some really gnarly wet sections and bogs and muddy death clay sections. And so what we, ha what we have here is just remnants of that. All right, so let's just start taking off some of the tape here. We talked about the Gorilla Tape. Uh, this is basically a clear tape uh, from Gorilla, the company that makes uh, really strong adhesives like super glue and um, also duct tape. This is $7 at your local hardware store. I think it's a nine yard uh, roll. So uh, let's just take a look at it. So as you can see here, I installed the Gorilla tape, the clear Gorilla tape from here all the way up to here. It's not that thick, but it definitely did the job. It protected the frame. Uh, it, there isn't any um, marks that actually show the tape broke anywhere. Just a little bubbling here, but that's from the install process. Um, so let's just take the tape off and see how it held up. All right, so ripping the tape off. Oh yeah. So I'm ripping the tape off and basically all of the adhesive is remaining stuck to the frame, as you can see there. 
So that's definitely not what I want um, from my tape, especially when I have to do more work now to take off that adhesive. Did it do the job of taking um, the brunt of the wear from the frame? Yes. But did it protect my frame from other adhesives? Definitely not. All right, so next up is the Lizard Skin Adhesive Bike Protection. Uh, this is the frame kit. It's a $40 package for not a ton of tape, but it is bike specific and it is made in the USA. So let's take a look and see how it held up and uh, how it pulls off the frame. All right, so I placed the lizard skin tape from here to here. You can kind of see it has this little, these little grooves in it. And that's super nice when you're actually working in a, a tight area that has curves in the frame. Uh, in this case, I wasn't necessarily using that uh, just because it's just placed on the uh, the straight part of the inside of the the down tube there. Uh, I ended up putting it right over one of the uh, the um, rib nuts for the frame, but um, yeah. So hopefully, uh, hopefully it pops off. It's a little bit thicker than the Gorilla Tape up here, um, but it's uh, it's definitely not as thick as say the Shelter Tape. Uh, just taking a look at it, um, because of these little cutouts here, there's going to be a few areas where the frame isn't actually protected by the tape, but that's kind of the way it is with this tape. So just pulling off the tape here to kind of show you how it actually peels back. And by the way, I have no idea how any of these are going to work except um, the silicone tape. So look at that. That's nice. So that's peeling back there. Um, so the lizard skin tape is peeling back really nicely. Not really leaving any uh, residue from the adhesive at all. I do have a little bit of a um, scuff mark from the frame bag before I actually put on this tape. Yeah, it did the job there. Look at that. Cool, so that stuff is pretty awesome. Um, worked really well. Uh, in general, I'm pretty pleased with how, uh, how that came off and how it protected my frame. Next up is the shelter tape. Uh, this tape is the thickest among all of them. They, they claim that it's uh, 1.2 millimeters in thickness. Um, this is the off-road pack, the two pack that uh, is roughly $30. It actually comes in two really long strips, as you can see here. Uh, and the install process was actually really easy. Uh, just a nice, str strong adhesive on the back. So let's take a look and see how it uh, held up on the frame. All right, so in general, uh, the shelter tape was installed from here to here on the frame. Uh, it's not as wide as some other tapes, but it definitely is super thick. As you can see, this is kind of the edge here. Um, so you can kind of see the, the, the thickness of the tape. So let's just try to pull it off here. It just ripped on me a little bit. It's almost got like a gummy feel to it. Oh yeah, that's really challenging to get off. Wow. Definitely more challenging than the other, the Gorilla Tape and the Lizard Skin Tape. But it's not leaving any residue. It's just really wanting to stick on there. There you go, you can see that. Oh gosh. There it is. Yeah, so it left a real nice clean surface. You can kind of see right here where the tape wasn't. You can see on the tape what it was protecting um, just those little pieces of the, the frame bag, the side of the frame bag, uh, that material that kind of etched into the tape there. Cool, so shelter tape, pretty sweet. It's definitely heavier. It's a heavier tape and it's a much thicker tape and it's much more challenging to uninstall, but the install process is super simple. I'm happy with it. All right, so next up is the uh, helicopter tape or racer tape. Uh, this is a two inch by 12 foot roll of tape. 
uh, that is $25. Uh, it's much more thin than the uh, shelter tape uh, and more thin than the, um, the lizard skin tape. It's kind of in the same uh, category as that Gorilla Tape as far as thickness is concerned and two inches wide. So um, pretty pretty narrow, but also probably all you need for, for what we're, we're looking to use it for. The tape installed really easily. As you see, it just has a uh, protective backing uh, that you would take off and uh, expose the adhesive. And we even tried to use the helicopter tape with the ride wrap solution and it worked really well. It didn't glide as well as the ride wrap tape, but it allowed us to pick up the tape and remove it with ease. And I think I should mention that the solution, the ride wrap solution or water will definitely aid in the install process for many of the tapes we're using today. So let's, uh, let's take a look and see how it held up. All right, the helicopter tape definitely got some abuse. This whole region down here, the, uh, the bottom part of the frame, uh, kind of collected a handful of clay. Uh, and then also that weight of the frame bag kind of sits down on the, uh, on the frame there. Um, so all of these, these marks from the frame bag are super prominent on uh, the tapes down here. So the tape in general though held up pretty nicely. Um, I had some kind of seep underneath and that's just because I, um, I didn't actually uh, adhere it down as well as I should have. Um, but it, for the most part, it looks like it, it held up pretty nicely. Um, not much else got underneath the tape. The tape itself though is for sure discolored and uh, it's kind of a mess. Um, so let's just try to pull it off here. So it's pulling off actually really easily. You can see that's where the tape got some grime underneath it. So it came off really easily. Um, it didn't leave any residue from the adhesive and um, it protected the frame nicely. So I definitely use this tape. It's super light, thick enough to definitely protect uh, and, um, and really easy to install and uninstall. All right, and next up, we're gonna remove the ride wrap tape. And real quick, the, the ride wrap installation was a lot more different than all the other tapes. Essentially, they ask you to not only wipe down the surface of the frame, but then dilute a solvent that you then spray on the, uh, the tape itself. And then once you place the tape on the frame, you squeegee it off. The really cool thing about the, um, the solvent and the tape is when you put it on the frame, it actually, you can move it around and get it exactly where you want it instead of ripping up the tape and maybe messing with the, the adhesive of the, of the tape. So with the ride wrap, it's pretty cool that you can do that. Uh, it definitely took a lot of time and I had to read all the fine print on the instructions, but it really wasn't uh, that bad of a process. And it was oddly kind of rewarding to install just because it was a process. So this is the uh, Ride Wrap Essential Protection Kit and you can get this for $35. Let's remove the tape and see how, uh, how it peels off. All right, so um, I installed the Ride Wrap from basically the lower part of the seat tube here all the way down and up to right around here. And basically this region in my frame bag, I really pack a lot of um, items that are really tightly packed into the frame bag that kind of hammer down into the frame. I've got my tube and my repair kit kind of squished down where the C-tube and the uh, the down tube meet. And so you can kind of see some, some marks from the frame bag, the bottom of the frame bag all over. So let's uh, peel it back and see how it uninstalls. And it's not leaving any residue, which is nice. And it's not really on there that tight either, which is super nice as well. It's just a tough region to kind of take the tape off with so many bends. So overall, I'm pretty pleased with the ride wrap and how, uh, how it came off and just how it worked in general. It looks like it protected the area very well. Yeah, Rad Wrap. I'd use it again. 
All right, so next up is electrical tape. Um, obviously, this is just another household item that you probably have lying around, so if you didn't want to buy anything, uh, this would definitely work. Electrical tape is pretty thin. It also tends to leave a little bit of a sticky residue on mostly anything that it sticks to, especially over long periods of time. Uh, this is, I think, a 20-yard roll, and you can get this at your local hardware store for around like $10 or so. So uh, let's see how it uninstalls from the bike. All right, so instead of actually wrapping the electrical tape around the C-tube, I just wanted to protect the portion of the frame uh, from where the frame bag was gonna end up rubbing against, mainly because I've had bad luck with electrical tape in the past, but it's nothing nearly as bad as that Gorilla Tape that I just took off. So let's just uh, peel it back. Oh yeah, so that's not nearly as bad as I've had in the past. Oh yeah, that's coming off clean. So there is a bit here that it looks like got underneath. I think one of the downsides to electrical tape is the width, but at the same time, when I was working around this derailleur mount on my frame, it was nice to kind of cut and have some thin slices of tape to install in this region. So it didn't leave any lasting residue for the most part. Um, there's some areas on here that it didn't protect that well, um, mainly because the ends kind of came up. Uh, if I was to wrap it around, I think that would definitely help alleviate the dirt kind of penetrating through the side of the tape. All right, so another household item is just regular packaging tape. Um, so packaging tape kind of varies in um, widths and whatnot, and this packaging tape is actually really thin. Uh, obviously, this is something you'll probably have at your house, and it's something that's super cheap if you didn't want to uh, break the bank on a bike-specific tape. Uh, so, yeah, let's just uninstall the tape and see how it held up. All right, so classic uh, YouTube mistake. I, hit, I forgot to hit the old record button, but I uh, just wanted to show you. I did rip off the, uh, the tape. All, the packaging tape didn't really come off in one clean uh, go. It's just all kind of... Uh, ripped up and um, and basically there's some adhesive on the tape, but most of it's still on the frame here it Took me a f I don't know like five minutes to get all of the tape off and still there's some tape remaining um, And I'm gonna have to use some sort of a degreaser to actually take all this adhesive off There still isn't as much adhesive on this portion than there was versus on the gorilla tape portion but that's probably just because there's not as much adhesive on this tape. So I don't think I'll ever be using packaging tape again to protect my frame. All right, so next up is the self-adhesive silicone tape. This stuff is nice, like I mentioned before, because it doesn't have any adhesive. So you're not gonna actually have any residue on, uh, on the frame from peeling the tape back. It does stick to itself, so you do need to wrap it around the frame. Um, so yeah, there's a handful of varieties here. It installs really nicely. Um, I ended up actually finding the Revelate stuff at my local bike shop. Uh, this stuff is $9 for a, a clear roll of tape. But like I mentioned before, this black stuff uh, you could probably find at a local hardware store. Um, yeah, let's peel it back and kind of show you uh, how it un installs. I ended up uh, using this for not only the protection of the underneath of the frame bag, but mostly for my top tube bag that direct mounts to these bosses right here on the top tube. Um, you'll see many bikes now come with these uh, these bosses up here and these are meant for, no, not a water bottle, but for a top tube bag. So a lot of times this stuff will kind of just peel back, but you can kind of see right here how uh, it kind of uh, adheres to itself and over time it really likes to stick to itself and um, it almost like welds to itself so it not only creates this like really nice seal but it, it just kind of sticks nicely so if you pull it eventually it will kind of pop off like it did there so the backing the one downside to this stuff is if it's not tight you will get some grit and grime in and so you could kind of just see a little bit of dust in here um, and then on the top here you can see that's 
what it's protecting from. So we went through a bunch of nasty rain and muddy roads and it kind of collected there. Um, but let's just see what's under this one. So you can kind of see a few pieces of dirt, but hardly any. So you can kind of see where it was placed and where it wasn't. You've got a little, you've got some lines there. It's really challenging, especially around bosses to install tape unless it's actually cut around the bosses. So for this, you know, maybe some uh, some actual tape would work well, but um, for this for this purpose, I'm happy with how it worked and it didn't leave any lasting marks on the frame. So overall, I mean, I think the, the test kind of revealed a few things. Um, one, probably your household items that you have or things that you can get at the uh, hardware store won't necessarily work as well as a bike specific tape. The lizard skin tape, the helicopter tape, the shelter tape, and the ride wrap all exceeded my expectations. They came off really easily. Um, and they did what they're intended to do to protect your frame. The Gorilla Tape was hands down the worst tape that I've used on my frame and I'm gonna have a chore to get all of that off. Second worst was definitely the packaging tape. Um, it's super challenging to take off. I did take it off. I still have some of the Gorilla Tape on my frame. Um, and then the electrical tape, it works well, but um, I think there's just better options out there. And then the self-adhesive silicone tape, I think there's just a time and a place for that tape. So yeah, overall, I'm super pleased with the four specific uh, cycling tapes, and I would recommend all of those, uh, depending on kind of what you're looking for. The ride wrap tape was definitely a little bit more intricate, but it worked really well. Uh, and the other three were pretty similar, uh, just varied in uh, widths. So thank you so much for tuning in today. If you haven't done so already, please uh, hit that subscribe button uh, if you like what you see. And if you have any tidbits that you'd like to share with us uh, on how you protect your frame, please leave them in the comments section below. As always, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, you know what to do. Pedal further. See ya. Uh, and it was kind of actually rewarding. This kit uh, basically kind of protects and uh, this kit basically protects and uh, what? Mm, um, well, this this uh, protection this tube you can get this for pretty cheap um, electrical tape. Let's see how expensive the old electrical tape is on the old interwebs here.